Hello everyone. This is Vishwas and uh, welcome back to our Webpack series. As part of this series, we are exploring Webpack from basics to advanced. And now let's understand the things that we covered till now. We started with our Webpack introduction where we discuss what is Webpack and why we need Webpack. Then we explore about the Webpack basics where we created very small application to understand the Webpack entries and Webpack output. And uh, we also created one application with multiple HTML pages and we understand what is multiple entry points in the Webpack. And uh, we, we also understand the Webpack loaders where we created one application with multiple images. So we use image loaders there. Also, we integrated CSS and CSS preprocessor in our application where we used CSS and uh, style loaders and also SCSS loader. And uh, finally, we also integrated font in your application where we use the resource module from Webpack. And now it's time to understand the most important part of the Webpack, that is Webpack plugins. As a part of this video, we just understand the basic of Webpack plugins. And from next video, we will start with actual implementation. To understand the Webpack plugins, we need to understand where plugins are exactly fit in Webpack workflow. So for that, let's understand this diagram. Webpack is basically start with one or more entry points. Then finally, it will give bundle output that is optimized, minified, and compressed. And uh, in between, we have a couple of steps. The first one is loaders, where loaders are used to do the transformation of the different file type. That means it do the pre-processing of the file and loaders are worked at individual file level. That means it will work either on images or uh, it will work on the different CSS or fonts, right? And loaders works during or before the bundle is generated. That means with entry point, uh, Webpack go through all the entry points and it will create the dependency graph. And once dependency graph is created, loaders comes in picture and uh, they will do the required transformation of all the files. And once that is done, now we have plugins in picture. So plugins are the backbone of the Webpack and it serves the purpose of doing anything that is not possible for loaders. Let's understand a little bit about the plugins. So it is a JavaScript library or a class or an object which can add more functionality to the Webpack. Also, plugin works at global level. That means at the bundle level or chunk level. Bundle means the entire bundle folder or chunk means if you have multiple entries or if you dividing your output into multiple files, each file we can consider as a chunk and plugins worked on that. And generally it works at end of the bundle generation process. That means it just work before giving the final output. Now to understand what exactly plugins are doing, we need to understand our current application that we are working on and we need to also analyze our current bundle. So first just understand the application in short. This is the application that we are working on. Uh, on the home page, we added a couple of images, a title with some CSS and fonts, right? And then we also added the explore more button. And when user click on this button, uh, basically user is redirected to the next page that is explore.html where we are showing list of some food items. Now let's understand the our webpack configuration file and bundle that we created till now. For that, let's move to the VS code. In VS code, you will see the application with two different HTML file. 
that is uh, index.html and explorer.html we have respective javascript for those and we also have the required css files and now if you understand our webpack configuration file where we added the entry we have output and we also added the loaders here and now if i go to my uh, dist folder you will see one asset folder where we have a couple of images and one font that is dynamically added through the javascript and then we have a couple of file one is explore.bundle.js and one is index.bundle.js now first let's understand what we are missing in our bundle the first and most important thing our bundle should contain all the code that is required to run the application that means our bundle should have all the html css javascript and static asset files but we only have couple of javascript files here and uh, some of the assets that means images and some font and that is added through the javascript then next point we have if you want to run our application with this bundle file we need to go to the specific html files and update the script tag from our bundle folder then fourth point is if you run our application in browser and run my application we will see the css is added directly in my dom right if i go to element and if i go to head section of my application you will see the style tag is injected here by style loader and currently all the css of my application is directly injected into the dom fifth point our bundle is not completely optimized and sixth point if we have some images that we are using in application we are not able to copy that into the final bundle so we need some way to resolve all those issues that means our bundle should be optimized all our html file should be present in final bundle and that should automatically update my script tag with bundle file then all my css file gets added in final bundle that should be a minified optimized so that we can fully leverage the option of caching then we need some way to copy all your static images or asset into the final bundle and we can do all that with the help of webpack plugins so now let's understand in short what are the different types of plugin we have and what plugins can do for us if you look at here the first plugin is regarding to the progress that means when we run the script npm run build we can use the progress plugin which can track the status of our build in much better way then second point is our bundle should contain all the required code so that our application is completely run through the bundle for that we need different types of plugin that is html webpack plugin which will copy our html files and add it in final bundle then we will require mini css extract plugin which will copy our css file and add it into the final bundle and then we will require copy webpack plugin through which we can copy the static assets then we can have the different environments right we can have the dev environment we can have the staging environment production environment we have the environment plugin which is used to add the different variables based on your available environment then we have plugin for optimization that means we are adding our javascript file into the final bundle but that javascript should be a minified and optimized for that we can use the tracer webpack plugin then we have a plugin for css minification and that plugin name is css minimizer webpack plugin 
and then we also have plugin for our bundle analysis that means when we are working on large application our bundle may contain n number of dependencies right and in some cases we might be using duplicate dependencies our dependencies might not be in used so that we can use the webpack bundle analyzer plugin and that plugin will analyze our bundle in much better way and we can optimize our bundle further and our main aim is our final bundle should be optimized minified so that we can run our application as fast as possible to user now if you look at these plugins some of the plugins are internal to webpack that means it is in built available in webpack some of the plugins are available through npm that means that is not part of the webpack but we can add the dependency of those plugins through the npm same as we did for loaders and we can create our own plugins as well and finally these plugins are register hooks in webpack build system and it can access webpack compiler it can change the working of the compilation as well so this is very crucial complex and most important part of the webpack life cycle this is just list of some important plugins but we have n number of plugins available based on our requirements that's all for this video hope you are clear with the basic as a part of next video let's start with our first plugin till now thank you bye see you in next video